What's up guys, Shea Stevens here, PDGA number 77522, and today you're coming along with me for my first ever round at South Vineland Park Disc Golf Course. Let's get to it. So South Vineland, aka Sovi, is a course I've been dying to knock off my bucket list for a while now. It's really iconic. I've seen it throughout the years on coverage, going all the way back to Disc Golf Monthly, and as recent as you know, Heiser Media. So I've seen a lot of it on film, and I wanted to see it in person, and I do not regret it. Hole 1 is just so iconic. You're standing on this elevated tee on the edge of a lake, and you got to throw over water to get to Hole 1's fairway, which is a par 5 to start your day. Don't know many courses that open with a par 5, but Sobe just hits you full throttle and... It puts the fear in you really quick. Uh, it's a great mix of open and wooded. Uh, the open holes are really windy, though. So apologies, guys, for the audio. I do my best to you know edit it out. And even on the course, I was trying to screen my uh, microphone from the wind. But there's always so much I could do. It's a, it's a Jersey thing. There's always wind in the open. Uh, but yeah, I'm really happy I got down. I went down to the shore to visit my parents that weekend. And I always said I wanted to make the detour to Vineland. I passed right by it on the way to their house. So uh, really happy I made the detour. And I hope you guys enjoy this round. Let's get the front nine going. Finally made it, guys. South Vineland Park. Uh, yeah, this is hole one. It is as scary on uh, in person as it was in film. So I've seen this course played a lot on like Disc Golf Monthly and other local channels. First time seeing it, and dang, this hole one is intimidating. They coming out on the yellow tees here. First hole, par five, 687 foot. Honestly, it's how brave are you to bite off, you know, is you know fairway going over the water. Versus just putting one up the middle. Uh, I am playing on my backup bag too, so this is gonna be interesting. Gonna be uh, some first throws for a lot of this, like this Fission Photon. Hopefully not the last. I'm just aiming kind of down the right side of the land, and hopefully I will not put this in the water. I got a breeze coming off the right, a bit of a headwind too, so I just can't turn it over, let it die. So forgive me if I play this safety safe, but uh, I hope you understand. Oh, uh, yeah, there was fear. Hit the hill. All right. Not lost. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. So I'm on my way down to a Wildwood to visit my parents. It is St. Patrick's Day weekend, hence the, uh, the jersey. I won a gift card in the Oakley's 24-hour charity stream and got myself a uh, Connor O'Reilly jersey. Big fan of him, so a uh, little Irish is supporting Big Irish. But yeah, this place is beautiful. I've been waiting to get down here for a while. Had the excuse. So, made my way down here. I've been told I'm gonna have a lot of fun and lose a lot of discs. I hope only one of those is true. But yeah, this whole one, very intimidating to start, especially with the wind. Uh, I drove through a lot of rain to get here, actually. Uh, luckily, it seems like it, a lot of it missed here. And one of the benefits of a Jersey course is that they're typically very sandy soil. So if they do get water, they drain pretty quickly. But, uh, yeah, really excited to get here, so uh, let's get this round going. Alright, so I have managed to kind of tombstone myself into the side of the hill here, into the moss. Again, this is a par 5, but I think I'm going to be playing it safe. Just because how tricky this is, so I'm just taking a pyro out to the right here, letting it swing back in, just cutting the fairway in half, hopefully. Ooh, that might be a little too high. Alright. Might be in the rough. All right, I'm having a lot of fun this first hole. We've got a tricky lie here. What do I have? Step out. Eh, chip back to the fairway. Don't do anything crazy. What do I got for upshot? Just nice easy tempo. Through this gap. Gotta stay legal, best over there. Whew. Man, this wind is, ugh, wind is throwing me. All right, guys, looks like we got a lucky roll, at least off the hill. Straight shot to the basket. Let's see how long. One was in the hillside. Two was to there. Three is to here. Let's see if I can see a par. Oh, uh, the wind's going to throw me. 
Ugh. I gotta be I gotta be brave and put it out to the right more. Now we got some favorable ground play to keep me closer to the basket, but this is death I'm staring at. I don't know, you guys are the camera's actually below the tray of the basket right now. And there's a big lake you may have seen right behind this. Uh, all right. Could have been worse. All right, hold two. 303, par three from the gold. So like a nice turnover, bends to the right. Could be a forehand hyzer flip too. There's an inside gap that looks sneaky, but I just drove an hour and just had to deal with hole one. I don't think I can do a forehand just yet. So uplink time. Oh, loved everything about it, but the height. Okay, up and down. Yeah, I've been, I've been working on my form, guys. The week I am filming this, I put up a video of a self-form check, and I'm really trying to stay back behind my brace, really like, build into it. And I'm just having some weird, you know, you change one thing, it affects others. So now I'm throwing lower than I normally do, so I have to adjust my reach back point. Uh, we'll see if I can figure it out. I think the left gap is my best option here. I'm just going to try and forehand the rebirth because I love how straight this thing goes and it's a little bit of check at the end hopefully Oop. all right turned it over a little bit but should have a putt all right, so I was so worried about hitting the gap I misjudged the distance on this one pretty badly I wanted to be like five feet long and I'm short side although I do have the tailwind behind me which is nice is what I prefer uh, and I'm gonna have to straddle putt because this thing is tickling my ear. All right. Yep. Putts are good though. All right, guys. I believe this is hole three. Hole three's gold tee. The sign's broken. I went up and read the white one and then used it and you just figured this pad. So it looks like we have two options out to the left, big Anheuser, but the road's OB. And then you have this up the middle gap. So I'm gonna try and put the uh, uplink right down the middle. If I can throw that low shot again, it actually wouldn't be too terrible. But it should just be a nice easy shot up there and let the uplink do its thing. All right, let's see how that works. All right, so next time through, it looks like there's a big Anheuser line or a forehand line. It looks like that's a better play, or at least safer. This is just such a ridiculous hallway to hit. Uh, the, there's an OB road long to kind of punish you, but I feel like, honestly, if you play safe, you can just, if anything, you'll just have a chip forehand. This is just such a heck of a line to come through. So, and it is so pinched in here. All right. Uh-oh. Might have some work on that putt. All right, time for a truss putt, guys, because the only good line I can put this camera in is directly behind the basket. And this is going to be a tricky one, I can tell you. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Give me a little room. All right. Bring it boom. There. What do we got? So we got the horseshoe. And yeah, horseshoe, I think, is the best bet because it's got a little less ceiling to deal with. Oh, uh, first bogey. Oh, it's such a short hole, too. All right, so early impressions. This is Jersey Disc Golf. When you're out in the open and you think you're safe, you just got to deal with the wind. And uh, when you're in the woods, you are in the woods. So it's a bit of a crazy walk. You actually go to the front of the park uh, off a of hole four, or off of, yeah, that was hole three, to get to hole four. So, uh, we're towards, so you had to walk out here, do a little bit of switchback, and then throw it back the way it came. Not necessarily a fan of that, but I understand you gotta work with what you got. So I don't know if there's like a way to like do a switchback in here. Uh, but let's see what hole four's got to offer me. All right, guys, this one's a little bit tricky. You are literally against the fence of the park property. So, they used every inch of this park they could. 
So hole four, 491, par four. My play is kind of just pull one out there. Probably uh, like a fairway or something just to be safe. Get to that last tree would be cool. Anything, pull, anything past that's bonus. And just cut this in half. So I'm bringing out the fission rhythm. I got a special edition in this bag. Let's do rhythm things. Oh, uh, drop me wind, drop me wind, drop me wind. Woo Just safe. Basket's up there on the hill and I, I'm safe, but I've successfully managed to pin myself really well behind this tree. Two, three. So give myself all the room I can. I think I'm gonna have to throw like a flexi shot with some finesse. So let's go. Ah, deflector. As a car comes through. All right. Push, push, push. Oh, sniped. Kind of like that line though. It's feeling good. All right. I saw a short par four and thought, yay, here's gonna be a chance to get that stroke back. That was a little presumptive. So, got this long circle two look, guardian tree. I gotta try and go right of it and then drop it in hopefully. And not roll manic on these chestnuts or whatever they're. All right, got that birdie. Okay, hole five, 288 foot par three. Bit of a ceiling, obviously a tunnel. Uh, I don't know if you, there's a pale yellow basket up there on the rail on the hill. Uh, that's an alternate basket. The one we're going to is down left. So, I mean, this, this just screams reactor. It's, if you ask the Richardson brothers why they made the reactor, they would send you a picture of this hole, I'm sure. So, let's give this a nice good send down the line, let it do its thing. Ooh, get stable. Ooh, might be time for that one to come out of the bag. I usually put reactors in my bag until they beat up and stay really straight like that. And that one's getting there, so I might need to put a fresh one in. I thought it'd be a little more beefy. Yeah, I was expecting hyzer on that thing and it never came, so pinned here on the right. Shouldn't be too much trouble though. Just simple little hyzer through the gap to the basket over there on the left. That should be stress-free. Yeah, a little tappy. Okay, hole six, 310 foot, par three. Looks like straight down this gap and then to the right. I'm trying to get a line on the basket, I can't really see it. I'm guessing we're out into the open. So. I was gonna go straight. But I want something to go a little to the right too. So I know the reactor goes dead straight, but I want a little drift on this. So I have a detour in the bag. So this should give me a little bit of flip and ride, hopefully. And if I hit it with just a little bit of hyzer, I want it to get up, get flat, and then maybe turn over a little bit. So I think this is gonna be the play. Ooh. Ran the right side, did throw a little bit on the softy though, or on the soft side, so let's see how that works. All right, so showing off a little added feature, looks like between five and six, there is an A-hole. Kind of runs this gap here. Uh, I'm guessing it's out of play right now because it looks like it holds water in the middle, so not playing that hole today. All right, so I'm a dum-dum. I read the next T marking for hole seven on the sign. I thought that was the basket. And I threw it perfectly if I was going to go to hole seven over here on the right. Hole six is baskets here, here on the left. It would have been a perfect reactor shot. Uh, say love you. Next time I come back, I'll know. All right, so circle two look. See if I can steal another one. 
shake and not roll my ankle on stuff. Okay. Uh, ah, nope. All right, sit that come backer. All right, so I gave myself some work. I'm guessing that's the T pad for that alternate hole. Saved a par. All right, hole seven. 292 feet. Par three. There's a pale basket long, which I'm guessing is an alternate pin. All the new bas or the you know baskets in place seem to have a bright yellow band. So based off the sign, we're going to the right. I'm gonna. I got a cosmic neutron bolt back in the bag. Hoping to hit this on forehand because I don't think a, it'll be a heck of a shot to get a backhand turn over there and carry this low ceiling. So I'm gonna go try and go straight at that. Uh, Straight that dead tree in the middle, hopefully hook up in front of it, and have a putt. Whew. Higher than I wanted to, threw it nose up. Eh, gotta work on the forehand more. All right, just a little more work to do. Whew, inside more than I wanted it but I got away with it. All right, nothing for granted. I was gonna drive or putt this, and then of course the wind reminded me I shouldn't do that. Okay. Ooh, that's actually old eights basket over there. Neat. All right guys, hole eight. We're going around the parking lot here. Par four, 556 feet. Looks like the road place is out of bounds. So I'm just gonna cut this in half. I'm gonna go with my, I got a fission bolt in this bag. Just run it down the right-hand side, get a little fade at the end, hopefully. Hook up. Yep. Love that fission bolt. Signed by Scott Soakley. Yes, if you guys watch my In the Bag, I am, I kicked the trances out. I'm trying to fall in love with the volts again. So, what do we got? Going for the bigger gap, which is the right gap. Low ceiling. Let's see if I can get that reactor just right down the middle. Just do its thing, finish left at the very end. Oh, the air bounced the heck out of that throw. Ew. All right, so is there a little bit of a ditch guarding the access to this green that I got through, luckily? But I left myself a really long look for that birdie. Let's see. Oh, a little more oomph. Should have that tap in. I am, I am definitely in New Jersey. Cause there are phantom bugs biting my legs and I don't see them. All right, hole nine, par three, 308 foot. Throwing from down here by the water's edge. Yeah, it's a, uh, let's see, the course here at South Island, very well hydrated, very pretty views. Uh, James Conrad would not leave this tee pad though. All right, so 300, a little over 300, uphill, so it plays like 320 ish, we'll say. Dog leg left. And, I, and it looks like this water wraps around, so I want to be safey safe. So I'm going to go that cosmic neutron volt for that extra stability. Just hit it up the gap here so I can give you a, a great angle, guys. There's a mound in the middle I'm kind of aiming at and hopefully hook it up before. I love it. All right, if the basket is where I think it is, that's phenomenal. So at least show you the fairway. See, after cresting that hill, just a nice tight wooded fairway. Drop off to the right there. All right, so the lake didn't come in as quickly as I thought, but still, 
definitely don't want to be on that hillside. Then you got to turn left here. I think I might have come in a bit early, which is okay. Yeah, that's a, that's a hard line to hit. I want to have to throw like a forehand hyzer flip to Annie to get that kind of straight finish. Ah, I'm right where I expected it to be. About 25 footer uphill, maybe 30. Alrighty, let's see if I can get one. Of course, the wind picks up as I'm going to putt. Tailwind though, which is nice, especially going uphill. So, ah, framed up putt here. Let's see if I can get it. Yeah! Good bird. Oh yeah, so I realize that uh, that's hole nine. So that's going to wrap up the front nine here of my first round ever at South of Island Disc Golf Course. And I am seeing what all the hype is about. I really love this place. Uh, hoping the back nine goes just as well. Back to Shea. So halfway through the round, and like I said, I'm having a great time out there. This course is really demanding, especially from the gold tees. You need to have your shots dialed, and you need to have a wide arsenal of shots if you want to score at Sovi. Um, minus one through the front, not terrible, could do better. I'm really digging the open holes though, guys. They're they're very deceptive with their technicality. Like you come out of the woods thinking, yeah, I can finally let loose. And yeah, you have some more airspace to work with, but you need to get your disc to land in a very specific spot to give you the best chance on your next shot. So it's kind of like that false sense of security. And all the open holes seem to have this great bounce of either OB or thick woods to punish you if you get too greedy. And I just love that kind of design and then throw the wind in on top of it. Uh, yeah, really digging it. So uh, hopefully all that continues on the back nine. I'll have to cut together for you guys as soon as I can. Before I go, uh, I do want to mention, as you may have noticed, I'm using a different bag for my backup bag now. I have a Atlas Supply uh, Pioneer V4, and I am loving it. Uh, I'm actually now an affiliate with Atlas Disc Off Supply, so uh, I want to thank them. You know, Shout out for supporting me. I have an affiliate link down in my description below if you guys want to check out uh, their products. And if you use that link uh, when you're buying stuff, uh, that supports me, so I really appreciate that. But it's a great quality bag, guys. For 88 bucks, too, you can't beat it. It's like that perfect middle ground between like the high end, you know, 150 plus bags, and then your little like $35 introductory backpack bags. And the quality jump is, you, you will notice it. So uh, I will be doing a review of just the bag uh, in the near future. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, but yeah, I'm working with the uh, Atlas. Really excited. Happy to have them supporting me. Uh, and again, if you guys want to grab anything from them, please use my link to uh, support me as well. I'd appreciate it. Uh, but with that, thank you for all your support. If you have any questions for me, reach out. I'll do my best to answer them. Take care. Thank you to my sponsors. For all your disc golf needs, check out Phoenix Discs and Foundation Disc Off.